Hello, hello, and welcome back to Put, Put More Thought, Thought into, into It. it. Was Magneto right? Modernizing representation of diverse identities in minority groups. In this part of the episode, Skylar and I will cover a wide range of ideas concerning the ethical principles that could potentially guide modern media portrayal of differing gender identities, as well as the exemplification of these concepts in fictional and non-fictional pieces of literature. Our goal is to determine the most ethical way to represent minority groups, particularly those of varying gender identities and sexual orientations, in order to create an environment in which all individuals can see themselves accurately and equally represented in the media. We hope that through this overall analysis, we will be able to create an environment in which disparities concerning media coverage of trans individuals, as well as those as various gender identities and sexual orientations, will be less variable in the sense that these individuals will find themselves treated as wholly represented people through both nonfiction and fiction sources of media. <clears throat> so we began this after recent news concerning the transgender swimmer Leah Thomas at the NCAA Division I Women's Swimming and Diving Championship caught our attention, and we immediately began to notice the wave of controversy that ensured from one individual competing at the collegiate athletic level. Although Leah Thomas is only one of many transgender athletes to compete at the elite or Division I collegiate level, we noticed a concerning pattern regarding media coverage of transgender individuals. So the negative representation of trans individuals and a large majority of other LGBTQ individuals led to our questioning of the normative ethical principles that allow for this repeated exposure to negative imagery. Now, concerning the ideals of normative ethical principles, our initial question is this. Is there an ethical or moral guideline we should follow when representing minority groups in the media? Communities such as the LGBTQ plus community, which consists of individuals possessing different gender identities, trans individuals, and those expressing different sexual orientations, are naturally underrepresented, and therefore it may benefit to create an ethical system by which we can uplift these groups to a sense of quote-unquote equal representation in the media. An attempt to define this type of equal representation in terms of normative ethics, we looked at identity representation through a utilitarian lens. Since 2012, the amount of LGBTQ plus individuals in the United States has doubled, with the greatest generational increase being observed in Generation Z. This rise in LGBTQ plus individuals has been attributed to numerous things, with one of these things being self-identification and the ease that modern day society has provided individuals to do so. As the younger Americans, when confronted with a world in which they should feel comfortable expressing themselves in, begin to slowly outnumber the older, more traditionalist generations, it is predicted that the number of LGBTQ plus identifying adults will increase at a faster rate than observed in past generations. With continued education regarding the LGBTQ plus community and overarching portrayals of different identities, the community, along with other minority groups, may expand to become the majority in America, which brings us to the moral principle of utilitarianism. Utilitarianism. utilitarianism is the doctrine that an action is right as long as it promotes happiness and that the greatest happiness of the greatest number should be the guiding principle of conduct. Those in support of limited reporting on the LGBTQ plus community state that they are supporting the majority by representing those presenting as heteronormative. While this argument may be supported when discussing a stagnant culture, it is an ideology that cannot be applied to our current modern society. As our society becomes more technologically advanced, we gain more opportunities to find others similar to ourselves and build a community. Just in the last decade, virtual communication done via mobile phones has grown 460%, with the average daily use of a mobile phone growing from 45 minutes to 252 minutes. Not only has the amount of intra-communication increased, but so has social media usage. According to Pew Research Center, nearly two-thirds of American adults, about 65%, use social networking sites, which is a 7% increase from poll results gathered in 2005. The general increase observed in both the amount of LGBTQ plus individuals and the use of social media is no coincidence. This modernization of how we communicate expands the types of connections we can make. We are no longer limited by proximity when it comes to meeting the community we identify with. With both of these trends presenting a steady trend upward, it is only a matter of time until more people meet other individuals that encourage them to accept who they are, therefore contributing to the rise of minority groups in the United States. Essentially, 
the minority will become the majority. If we were to apply a utilitarian set of ethics to this trend, it would be morally right to support the mi raising minority as they represent a larger percentage of individuals that are not yet comfortable expressing themselves, i.e. the majority. It will be for the greater good to begin representing communities such as the LGBTQ plus community as such equal representation will encourage individuals to begin the self-identification journey and find happiness in their own identity. Results from a British study conducted for the 2015 edition of the Journal of Social Psychology found that the happier the study participants felt, the more likely they were in the present to choose to help someone else rather than themselves. This sense of contributing back to the community can only invoke positive effects on the community as a whole. This request for specifically equal representation should be taken seriously, though, as just choosing to represent only one side of, of the community, as experienced through bias commentary, can be just as detrimental to a community as not representing it at all. Thank you, Hannah, and I agree. Let's take a look at modern day fictional sources of media in which gender representation and broader representation of these minority groups have been done and where it is lacking. First and foremost, I think one of the best examples of identity representation is through comic book narratives. The portrayal of relevant moral exemplars or different individuals through comic book narratives allows for a broader audience to relate to these fictional characters in a positive way. Young children and adults alike are able to relate to the variety of comic book characters and emulate the moral examples set by the diverse group of comic book characters that currently reside within the superhero genre. Through varying comic book narratives, we can see the pitfalls of underrepresentation of these minority groups and the methodology by which we can improve the representation of these groups in the media at large. For numerous years, representation within the comic book world of heroes was mainly defined by cis white males saving women from themselves and protecting the universe at large from danger. However, in recent years, an uprising of female superheroes, as well as, as, well as heroes of different sexual orientations and gender identities, have come to grant a broader audience a means by which they can see themselves portrayed in the media. To begin this analysis of gender representation in superhero comics, we must identify where broader representation was initially the most successful. According to author and associate English professor Mark DiPaolo, one of the most prominent forms of the representation is in Marvel's X-Men universe. So Mark DiPaolo's argument regarding the X-Men is that the X-Men comics and films provide a wide range of mutants who ultimately can represent a broader audience of individuals, um, allowing for readers of various racial backgrounds, genders, sexual orientations, and religious beliefs to see themselves in the narratives of the X-Men. While the intricacies of the X-Men narrative are spread across multiple comic books, volumes, one of the main principles of the story is the idea of a broad range of people becoming mutants, granting a diverse audience the opportunity to relate to numerous characters and their moral examples. The X-Men, if you're unfamiliar with the story, is a group of superhero characters divided into groups due to the nature of the X-Men gene, those who possess the genetic alteration to become mutants with varying levels of superpowers. However, the division occurs when Magneto, the quote-unquote villain of the story, believes that in order to achieve equality in the world, the minority group, or the mutants, must eliminate the majority. This elimination will allow for the mutants to freely exist without prejudice, and therefore create a world in which the minority becomes the majority. Professor X, or the hero of the story, believes in living harmoniously alongside mutants and non-mutants, that by representing the minority in a positive way that uplifts them to the same level as a non-mutant individual, a non-prejudiced world would allow for a peaceful existence amongst the different groups of peoples. In the sense of normative ethical principles, Magneto represents a more utilitarian approach, his ultimate goal being to eliminate the majority and raise up the minority. He fears that a new holocaust is coming, perpetuated by homo sapiens against the homo superior or the mutants, and he wishes to strike first. Uh, this idea of striking first is an ethical ideal that is guided by the consequences of one's actions rather than the principle. If Magneto merely leaves the mutants and non-mutants to their own devices, he fears that the mutants will be eliminated and harmed by those who do not accept them. Therefore, to generate the acceptance of the minority, he justifies the elimination of the majority to create a world in which this minority becomes the major majority. But how does this apply to modern media representation? Unfortunately, there is no way to eliminate the majority, as it is nearly impossible to get a proper representation of the minority. Completely abolishing the majority would work theoretically, but it is not practical, practical in its application. And as seen by the consequences of Magneto's actions, the mutants will always coexist with non-mutants. So how in the terms of X-Men and representation can we generate a more equal representation of these minority groups?
Well, Professor X is a better example of the ideal of coexistence. Rather than the elimination of the majority, he wants to peacefully live with everyone by promoting the minority in a positive way. So according to DiPaolo, Professor X utilized his mutants to quote unquote, protect homo sapien lives from homo superior aggression and create a more stable political environment from which he, Professor X can negotiate for mutant rights and improve the general public's perception of the mutants. Professor X is also an adherent of Gandhi's philosophy of passive resistance, and he hopes that humans will respond to mutants with less fear and more acceptance when they are seen for how nice and reasonable most law-abiding mutants are. So in an ideal world, this form of pacificity would generate a positive response and bring about more equal representation of minority groups amongst those that are the majority. But unfortunately, this tactic does not always prove successful, especially within the media. When a person is identified as deviating from the norm, regardless of their peaceful attitude, a large majority of the time they will be condemned for their differences and portrayed in such a way to paint them in a negative light. So how can we resolve this issue? By creating an increased representation of these minority groups, by promoting increased association with characters and heroes who are different uh, ethnic and racial backgrounds of different gender identities and sexual orientations. And only when we generate this representation, as seen by the diverse range of mutants in the X-Men films and comics, will the minority be brought to an equal level to that of the majority. And this increased representation will ultimately be able to achieve a more positive display of the diverse world within we live in. So to continue this conversation of representation, especially for those of different gender identities, a look into the trans community and the portrayal of trans individuals in comics exemplifies the pitfalls of modern media representation of minority groups. Trans women are highly underrepresented within the comic book world, as those within the LGBTQ community are just now beginning to see themselves represented in more up-to-date comic book stories. In the past, trans individuals have been represented by the superhero narrative in a way that objectifies their differences into a state of mystery, which generates a public opinion of judgment towards these different individuals. When large publication companies use superhero narratives to portray minority or underrepresented groups as objectifiable, inhuman, unnatural beings, it creates a public opinion that transpires into one of judgment and fear of these differences. The majority ends up as the promoted group, with the minority being placed into the category of the quote-unquote unnatural. Take, for example, the Sandman comic series that, according to Rachel Stevens in the article Trans Representations and Superhero Comics, a conversation with May Rood, Jay Schuyler, and Rachel Stevens, include one of the first trans women that Rachel had seen in comics, if not the first. Although it acted as a source of identification for the trans community within fictional media, the Sandman comic series chose not to represent the community in an entirely positive light. In fact, it's important to mention that trans women were shown to be the murder victims in the serial convention storyline in the same comic. In fact, one of the serial killers at this convention was talking about how he only kills trans individuals because something about them makes him feel uncomfortable. Rachel Stevens, Jay Schuyler, and May Rood provide a first-hand perspective on such faulty sources of representation as they are all part of the trans or LGBTQ community. Therefore, their experience regarding trans representation in comic book sources of media explicitly exhibit the adverse effects of these inaccurate representations on the audience. Another example of trans individuals in comics that is problematic is the archetype of the shape-shifting individual. Jay Schuyler points out that there should be an avoidance of shape-shifting characters such as Mystique as how they are portrayed is problematic. Such shape-shifting characters almost never have any direct correlation to the lived realities of trans people. However, these fictional characters are always assumed to be an accurate allegory for trans identities or at the very least a plausible substitution. Unfortunately, these misrepresentations Representations of different gender identities, such as those individuals within the trans community, by public sources of fiction-based media generate increased transphobia and misogyny, especially towards trans women, and perpetuates the issue of misrepresentation of minority groups. By representing the minority in a way that objectifies the individual for their differences, rather than accurately base them as a whole person, the majority continues to beat out the minority and continue the cycle of judgment. Therefore, by taking actions of equal representation or by promoting increased accurate representation of the minority, such as those with different gender identities, modern media can generate a more positive response to these minority groups and ultimately uplift them to the same level as the majority in both fiction and nonfiction sources of media.
Overall, by analyzing the ways in which comic book narratives have impacted representation of minority groups, particularly that of the transgender and LGBTQ community, as well as the implications of a utilitarian perspective regarding minority representation, we can implement these ideals into the methodologies of public, non-fiction sources of media. Although not everyone may read a comic book, a larger audience will, in fact, engage in reading or watching public news and journal articles. However, as seen by misrepresentation within the fictional universe of accurate portrayal of minority groups, such as those with differing gender identities, there is also an inaccurate representation of those minority groups in modern media sources. For example, tying back to the Leah Thomas controversy during the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships, language discussing Leah's accomplishment particularly revolved around her ability to quote-unquote outswim other female assigned at birth swimmers. These new sources failed to mention Leah's journey as a transgender individual and that she had been taking hormone therapy for the last two years, which has caused a large majority of her muscles to atrophy. Therefore, when looking at the controversy that arose due to Leah's success, the main point of the argument is that her success was only questioned as the majority disliked being beaten by an individual within the minority. These differences, which people do not typically consider with, when within the majority, created a wave of tension which centered on the idea that success was only deserved if achieved by someone who was highlighted by the media as a part of the majority. As quoted by another transgender athlete, Lucas Draper, in a CBS News article covering the Leah Thomas controversy, the reality is people win and lose all the time, and nobody considers that unfair, until it is a marginalized person, specifically a black or brown woman, or a trans woman. Yeah, and Draper continues with this vein of logic when discussing the implications of Leah's success. Draper says, people who identify as transgender are very much in the minority, and people just don't understand where people like me are coming from. I just want to be me, and me is, is not my private parts, it is who I am inside. Therefore, when looking at the presentation of minority groups by the media, there is a consistent negative tone which focuses on the differences between minority groups and those who are viewed by the public as the societal norm. Those within the minority are neither represented accurately or portrayed in a way that conveys them as human beings. They are broken down into the notion of their differences and not who they are as a person. So how can we prevent this misrepresentation or even negative and controversial portrayals of those within the minority group? We can do so through this utilitarian approach. By approaching our ideals of representation through a standard in which those within the minority are discussed and represented on the same level as those within the majority, there will be an increased spread of representation which will prevent the quote-unquote shock that occurs when someone in the minority is published by modern media sources. The cultural hegemony that has been pe perpetuated by the majority continues to bring down minority groups, and ultimately, through utilitarian method, we may be able to disrupt this constant theme of misrepresentation of minority groups. To be a utilitarian in this sense isn't to push for a majority of equality, but rather properly address the rising minority so that the increased representation creates an environment in which public media portrays those within the minority on the same level as those within the current major majority. Will this prevent all misrepresentation of minority groups such as trans individuals? Probably not. To be quite honest, we are still attempting to see proper representation of LGBTQ individuals within comic book narratives and the media at large, so to expect change to occur overnight is impossible. However, through these utilitarian means, we can hope that the increased representation of the growing minority will generate a response that will prevent future Leah Thomas controversies from arising, that those within the minority groups will be represented for their accomplishments and as the individuals they are, rather than for their differences. Although Magneto cannot eliminate the majority, we can still attempt to uplift everyone to the same standards with the hope that our differences will no longer define our successes, but rather the person as an individual.